Um, I have very high expectations myself, so that's what I put on myself most weeks. My game is in a really good space now, and now it's about performing each week. Rick, game number 100 this weekend, a nice little milestone, but the important question, does your son Jace get to run out <laughs> alongside you? Yeah, he does, uh, Benny. Uh, I'm not sure if he's excited, I don't think he really knows what's going on, but um, yeah, it's a little bit of a uh, great ex incentive for me, um, for him to run out, uh, I'm really excited. Uh, I'm not sure he's going to run out, I think I'm going to have to carry him, <laughs> Benny, so, um, but yeah, very excited. It's your 44th game for Melbourne, obviously a two club player, did it take a while to really settle and feel at home here? Oh, not really, I think the, the boys have been fantastic, the club's been brilliant, but um, yeah, for me, I think that uh, it's an exciting milestone, but uh, I'm purely focused on uh, getting another win uh, to start this great season that we've had. But um, yeah, I think that it's a, a little bit of a credit um, to the people around me that have supported me through my AFL career. Not many people get to 100, so um, I'm super grateful for all the people that have helped me uh, through the 100 games, but uh, looking forward to plenty more. You did come across from Adelaide with a fair bit of expectation, particularly around the contract and, and all of that. Was it hard to deal with that and find your best form early? Oh, look, I th yeah, it was hard, uh, especially early. I think that um, I didn't deal with it uh, very well. Uh, you know, social media yeah. these days is a tough thing to be a part of when you're a professional athlete. But um, for me, I really just basically got off social media, got off Twitter, um, and that really helped me sort of focus in on, on what the club valued uh, in me and why they got me there. And um, the expectations that a lot of people had outside of the footy club were not really what the expectation that the footy club had inside the four walls. So um, for me to be able to do that, and I think that you know the last year and a half, I've really found, found some form and uh, found some continuity in my training and my games. And uh, I think my form's reflective of that. Yeah, you're certainly starting to get the credit externally for that form. You're, you are only 25. Do you think people probably expected more from you when you were young because of the contract when you were naturally going to take a bit of time to develop as a key defender? Yeah, I think that um, I had high expectations of myself um, when I first come to the club. And, I, you know, I was only 21 years old. But um, now that I've sort of started to mature and um, get older, I think that for me, um, the expectation is that uh, you know play well each week, and I'm really a leader of the footy club, and um, I have very high expectations myself. So that's what I put on myself most weeks. Um, but as you said, it, it did take a little bit of time to develop and fit in. But I think my my game is in a really good space now. Now it's about performing each week. The back line's probably functioning better than ever. Obviously, yourself and Maisie getting a bit of continuity. Unfortunately, Adam Tomlinson goes out this week, but there are blokes that can come in. Harry Petty, potentially Tom McDonald. Are yep. you confident with the whole mix down there? Yeah, absolutely. I think that, um, to be honest, my form is probably reflective of the whole back line, being able to um, play as a unit and, and do things that, um, you know, each one of our strengths um, have really come into play, I think, over the past seven weeks. And, um, yeah, obviously, with Tomo going down, it's pretty um, disappointing and, um, shattering for Tomo because I love playing with Tomo and I know that we all do but um, you're going to get an opportunity with Harrison Petty to come in or as you said Tom McDonald went down there in the second half and I thought he was really good but um, Harrison Petty I think that he's he's ready to step up and he's a player that uh, you know talk about age I think he's only 21 years old and we're really looking forward to having him down there. The North Melbourne game it was an interesting one obviously a bit of a slow start but good to show that we can turn it around do you take a lot of learnings from that one learnings is a funny word but you almost think well things didn't necessarily go to plan but um, yeah you can grow from that game yeah I think there was a lot of things different in that in that game and um, yeah you talk about learnings I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of learnings this week and there already has been um, in terms of our performance especially in the first half we weren't up to scratch and we weren't up to the standard that we expect of ourselves but um, to be able to turn that around in the second half was um, I think a credit to the coaches, the players and everyone at the ground to, to really bring that energy and um, you saw in the third quarter once we got a little bit of a roll on the, and we wanted to and we started to play the way that we want to, um, it really turned and uh, you know it's, it's a credit to all the boys and um, I think that uh, for us it's a really good stepping stone. You were a part of a pretty successful Adelaide side, obviously 2017 making the grand final. How does this side compare? Now we're at seven and zero. It's been a nice start to the year, but are there similarities that you're drawing? Well, if you want to talk about similarities, I think uh, in 2017 Adelaide were either six and zero or seven and zero, and we had to travel down to Hobart to play <laughs> North Melbourne. And um, in that game, North Melbourne kicked 11 goals in the first quarter to zero to us. So hopefully, there's not too many comparisons. Um, but yeah, I think that the group has come so far in the time that I've been here. 
Um, 2018, we come in and we were a young side and um, I obviously wasn't playing in the final series with my injury, but um, you could tell the group was a little bit immature and when things probably weren't going our way, um, things did turn and uh, we weren't able to get them back on track. But I think you've been able to see this year that each game we've had a little bit of a you know, controversy or a little bit of a challenge in terms of the way the game's been playing, but we've been able to you know, stick to the process and um, play out our, our way and it's really turned. So I think that um, the comparison to um, the Adelaide side, I think that that's what um, Adelaide were really good at in 2017. Um, when challenged, they were really able to um, adapt and, and go ahead and play the way they wanted to. Um, and I think that the, the side that we've got together now and the maturity that we've, we've got um, is really showing that. People are often afraid to look too far ahead and talk about premierships. That is the goal. Can you feel like this group is starting to build a bit of belief that, that they can get there? Yeah, look, I think that um, you'd be pretty silly if you're an AFL footballer or an AFL coach or... Um, anyone within these four walls that don't think that we can um, get to the get to the premiership, um, I think that it's not something that we speak about day to day. But um, for us, yeah, we're really looking forward to the challenge. And probably now that we're on top of the ladder, I think that sides are going to start um, penciling us in, and um, really looking forward to the challenge that uh, that they're going to play the demons this week. So we're really looking forward to. Um, backing that up and uh, making it as hard as possible for each team. Well, it's an exciting season ahead. Rick, thanks for your time. Good luck this weekend. Thank you.